Every day on There's No Taste Like Home, Chef Gino De Campo will take three family cooks and the recipes that have been passed down through their families from generation to generation, out of the home and into a professional kitchen. Come on, let's get cooking. Yes, Together, they'll serve up their treasured dishes to paying customers, and the winning dish, judged by Gino, yes. will be added to the restaurant's menu for a month. Remember, this is your great-grandmother's recipes. To prove that there is no taste like home. On today's show, a delicious working-class game pie that once fed a family of 13 children and has been passed down four generations. All was home cooking. Nothing at all was bought. No fish fingers or frozen meals <laughs> or anything. <laughs> An amazing Iraqi Jewish dish originally enjoyed on Shabbat or Holy Day. Saturday morning, an Iraqi Jewish household. Uh, that's the dish you have for breakfast. And a stunning seafood noodle recipe with heritage stretching back to the 13th century. I got taught this dish back in Singapore in my auntie's store. Um, and then I've been practicing when I come home. Hi, I'm Gino De Campo, and welcome to There's No Taste Like Home Today. I'm in the home of the Scousers, Liverpool. This city has a great history with food and it can be traced back since 1190. And back then was known as Elverpool. You know why? Because the River Mercy behind me was full of baby hills. When the Albert Docks were built in 1846, it opened up the city to the rest of the world. Exotic food started to pour in and the lucky Liverpoolian got to try food from the Far East and India. Well, 150 years later, the people of Liverpool, they will have the chance to try my three home cooks food, ready for service at lunch in this beautiful restaurant. They'll be serving up three wonderful dishes that have been in their families for generations. But how they will go down with paying customers? Well, let's get in there and meet today's cooks and prove one more time that there's no taste like home. Today's cooks are Edie Pope, who is baking her grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie served with seasonal vegetables. David Hackack, who is making his grandmother Farcher's sabich, a vegetarian meal of stuffed pitta, served with salad. And Perry NG, who is cooking his grandma Amma's hokey and me. Prawn and squid fried noodles served with a topping of crispy shallots and sliced limes. So, guys, welcome to a professional kitchen. What do you think? It's very big. Very brilliant. Yeah. It's nice. Is it a bit different from uh, your kitchen, yeah. I guess? Yeah. yeah. Your recipes, I've seen them, okay? You've got a lot of preparation to do. So, get on with it, look after each other, and I'm going to watch you. I'm going to watch you. Let's meet our first cook and find out about her special dish. Edie Pope is a 64 year old farmer from Lydiate in Merseyside. She has six grown up children. Her dish is Grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie served with seasonal vegetables. Being from a family of busy farmers, this dish has been a staple meal in the Pope family for years because it simply looks after itself. This is Grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie. I like cooking rabbit pie because it's something that you can prepare and put in the oven and leave it while I get on with other jobs on the farm. I've cut the rabbit into portions and I'm now going to bring it to the boil and cook it for about an hour or an hour and a quarter and you use the stock for the gravy for the rabbit pie. While the rabbit cooks, Edie gets on collecting today's eggs from her chickens. Right, I'm now taking the rabbit off the bones, ready to cut it up and put it into the pie. I'm frying the bacon because it makes it a better flavour in the pie. I think. And we'll just leave that to crisp a little bit. You cut up your shallots and mushrooms and fry those. I'm doing the pastry now for on top of the rabbit pie. Plain flour I'm using, lard and margarine. And you just mix that up until it resembles breadcrumbs. Mum said, you'll never be good at baking, your hands are too big. 
but she did admit that she was wrong. Add some icy cold water until it binds together. Just let that rest a little minute. This is the stock off the rabbit now, and I've added flour and some gravy browning, and I'm just going to pour this over the top of the rabbit streaky bacon mushroom and shallots. Next, we're going to roll out the pastry to cover the pie dish. This is my blackbird, and you bake it in the pie in the centre so that the steam rises and comes out the top, and that stops your pastry from going soggy. These are the eggs that I've collected off the hens, off a couple of them this morning, and they were still warm when we brought them into the kitchen. And that is ready for the oven. And now it's time to serve up. That's Edie's Grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie served with seasonal vegetables, a dish that's steeped in rural England's heritage. So, Edie. What should I know about your recipe? It started with, in the late 1800s with Grandma Tyra, Louise Tyra, when she used to do it for her family because she had six children. Then she passed it down to Mum, who had 13 children. Wow. And, of course, living on a farm, rabbits were readily available and we could get the vegetables easily enough to, to put everything in. Um, when the rabbits arrived, it was my job to skin them and clean them and then joint them into a dish, and then Mum took over from there. All was home cooking. Nothing at all was bought. No fish fingers or frozen meals <laughs> or anything. No, everything was home cooked. Mum, oh... What can you say? I know everyone says their mum's the best. My mum was the best. Very strict parents, both of them. Bed at seven o'clock, whether you liked it or not, but as she so rightly was proud to say, never a policeman knocked on our door. Three years ago, she died. She had 57 grandchildren and wow. 68 great-grandchildren. Amazing woman. Yes, yes, absolutely. How do you feel being in a professional kitchen? Because, of course, you, know, you always cooked at home, your family around. All of a sudden, you're cooking with strangers in a kitchen yes. that you don't know. We were used to cooking in volume. Friday night, you know, would be like six apple pies, six rhubarb pies, if that was in, in season, you know. It was a restaurant or something after, in your house. That is. But my children six, also Six know. apple pies? Yes. But that, that's what you would need for the weekend, you see, for the desserts. So, Edie, what would it mean to you and to your family and to dish to win today and be on a restaurant menu? It would be lovely because we are arable farmers and it blends in with farming because we have all our own vegetables to be able to add to the dish and just to keep it going for generations to come, hopefully, as people are learning now to cook instead of all these uh, prepared meals. I think they will try things like So you're this. really doing it for your family but yes. also for all the farmers oh, out there? yes, yes. Edie begins preparing her dish by jointing the rabbits and lightly boiling them. She's already aware of the task that lies ahead. I've got an awful lot to do today, so time is very important. I like to be on time. So hopefully I can get the rabbits cooking and then prepare everything else. And once I know that sort of an hour to go, I know that everything will be right then. And it looks nice and it tastes nice. Come on, you're gonna have to agree with me. What an amazing recipe we had so far. But join me next, I have two more cooks to meet with amazing family dishes. Coming up, two more tantalizing recipes, a very special Iraqi Jewish feast, and a seafood extravaganza that has traveled all the way from Singapore. How long for the five noodles? And service proves to be too much for one of our cooks. Come on, don't you know what I'm Lime, 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 lime. It's a little bit panicky now. I haven't got a clue what's going on.
Welcome back to Days Not Taste Like Home, where today I'm in Liverpool in this beautiful professional kitchen where all my three home cooks are busy preparing their dishes. Now, before the break, we had an amazing family recipe with a lot of history, but we still have two more to come. So let's find out who's gonna be my next cook. David Hackack is a 53-year-old psychologist who lives in Liverpool and describes himself as a bit of a joker. Today, he's cooking his grandmother Farcher's pitta stuffed with boiled eggs and aubergines and served with hummus and salad. Sabich is a popular dish in Israel that is traditionally eaten by Iraqi Jews on the holiest day of the week. This is how I make my grandma Farcha, Iraqi Jewish dish called Sabich. I'm starting by making the uh, pita bread. I love cooking this dish because, first of all, this is what I'm used to have from back home when I was a child. Um, my mother used to do it, to make it every Shabbat, every Saturday. We take one cup of flour, one spoon of dry yeast, one cup of warm water, to the second bowl, two cups of flour, you can tell that the yeast is starting to do its job. You are mixing three spoons of olive oil. Gradually, you add to the second bowl. There is nothing like playing with your hands. Really nice. You cover it, and then you leave it for another two hours. Right? While the dough is raising, you prepare the hummus. Well, Israelis will say this is, the, this is their uh, dish, which is incorrect, because Egyptian will claim it's theirs, Iraqi will claim it's theirs. You know what, it's tasty, who cares who claims uh, it is. This was one cup of uh, chickpeas. You have to boil it for at least 20 minutes. Then what I do, I dry it into the bowl put it in the mixer and gradually... Right, we're adding garlic into the mix. Drying a bit. Now you add the tahini. Then we're going to add it now, lemon. Uh, actually, there is a phrase, a phrase in Hebrew. Uh, it says, limon, mosif, hamon. Limon, lemon, mosif, add a lot. We're adding and best ingredients for the hummus is cumin. You can use parsley. You mix for the last time. I'm good. To create the perfect color and texture for his eggs, David began his preparations last night. They've now been cooking for 12 hours. What happens is the color of the onion will come inside the eggs. Do you like it? Don't you think it smells nice? Smell it. Yeah, it's good. Right, you take the knife. We are going to make the aubergine. Voila! The sound of frying aubergine, it's fantastic. You leave it for at least one minute to rest in the oil and you already see this gold, beautiful color of the aubergine. Now that we're going to flatten the dough, we rest it for 45 minutes. We're taking the baking paper and we place them on the baking pa paper. You see, you have a proper pita uh, look like, but it's not baked yet. And the only thing you need to do now is just bake it. For seven to 10 minutes, you'll see when it's becoming yellow and goldy and it's nice. Now I combined all the ingredients and served with simple tomato salad. That's David's grandmother Farcher's pita stuffed with boiled eggs and fried aubergines and served with hummus and salad, a dish with a very intriguing history. Now tell me where did it all start with this recipe? It's a very traditional Iraqi Jewish recipe. Okay. Saturday morning in the Iraqi Jewish household. Uh, that's the dish you have for breakfast. Okay. It started the 1800s uh, in Iraq with my grandmother. My grandmother was a big, massive lady. I don't mean fat, I mean really tall. tall. A proper lady. She died 102 years 102. old. 102? And she was really old. You wouldn't dare to cross her. We were still on a deathbed, petrified of her. 
I was born in Israel. My mom moved with my, my siblings and my dad to Israel in the 1950s. And I moved to England in 1996, and I brought it from Iraq via Israel to Liverpool. Tell me the memories that you have when you were a little boy in the kitchen with your mom, any, anything that comes up in your mind. When I was maybe four or five years old, the smell of aubergine frying is fantastic. Then I didn't ask. I entered the kitchen, pinch one slice of aubergine, put it in my mouth. It burned my tongue, voila. And I was like really screaming, but with no sound whatsoever. And my mom said, Fantastic. The child is quiet for five minutes. Thank God for that. <laughs> How old would you think this recipe would be? Are we safe to say that it's over 100 years old? Oh, well over, well over 100 years. Because I ask, I ask my mother, my mother now is, she's way into the late 80s. And I said, how old is this dish? And she said, how do I remember? And I said, well, is it like you created it or the family? Said, of course not. It runs in a, just, been in, in a in generation for yeah, a yeah. long, long time. And everyone is like adding uh, things into it, you know. What would it mean to you today to win and have your family recipe in this beautiful restaurant for one month? It would be amazing because no one in England never heard of this dish before, okay. really, people around here. And the new generation, people don't like, you know, to use the old of thing, course. they think it's too. And I think that's what I, I want them to be familiar. And if after that, they're going to say, are there any more dishes, Iraqi, Jewish uh, dishes? And well, there are plenty of, of course. And we can bring it back to this So country. you want the people to experience the culture, the, you know, that, yes. that you have yes. and growing up and the experience yeah. that you had. Yeah. David's preparations for service began the night before with his eggs slow cooking with the onion skins to achieve the desired color, taste, and texture. His complex and time-consuming dish is a real challenge for a professional kitchen, but he's determined to get it right. Last night, I prepared the chickpeas and prepared the eggs. You see, it's a Jewish dish, and Jewish dish takes a long, long time to take your breath away. We need to do it the day before, because when you see the eggs, you'll understand. Uh, it has to take colors, and the colors been, can be taken only if it's cooked overnight. Otherwise, there's no chance. Another great recipe full of memories, but it's not over yet. So let's find out what our next cook is serving up. Perry NG is a 36-year-old married father of two from Liverpool, here with son Perry Jr. and daughter Georgia. Today, he's making a dish that originated from over 4,000 miles away. Grandma Amma's prawn and squid fried noodles. The dish began its life in China before Perry's aunt moved to Singapore, taking the dish with her. It has always been a firm family favorite. This is how I'm going to make Amma, Cox, We Goes, Hockey and Me. Well, it was my grandmother's dish. Then my grandmother then taught me auntie, who then taught me father, who then taught me. The shells have got all the flavour. I'll stir fry the shells and the heads, and then I'll boil them and let it simmer to bring all the stock out. I'll stir fry for a couple of minutes till you start getting the smell of the prone shell and then I'll add the water. I'm now going to sieve the uh, prawn stock. I can get rid of them now, because I've got the juice. I like to blanch the prawns first, because they're cooking so quick. Now I'll chop up the fish cake and get ready to stir fry. Traditionally, my grandmother used to make the fish cakes uh, herself. When my dad first comes to the country, he also made fish cakes and sold to the Chinese supermarkets. But for convenience, I just buy them in. I eat a lot of squid. My wife and children don't really like it. They think it tastes like elastic bands. I'm just going to smash the garlic, peel it and chop it, ready to stir fry. Let the wok get nice and warm. I'll then add the garlic. Now I'll add the egg. Now I'll add the squid. The smells remind me of being in Singapore in my auntie's noodle bar. I'm going to add the fish cake. Now I'm going to add the noodles, the prawns, 
the stir fry now so it gets nice and warm. I'm going to add now the prawn stock, the sweet soy sauce, just a little bit of salt and a mouthful of Add the bean sprouts, last thing, and that's it. Done, finished. I like to sprinkle crispy shallots on the dish, as my auntie does in Singapore. That's Perry's Grandma Amma's prawn and squid fried noodles, served with a topping of crispy shallots and slices of lime. Gino is keen to find out more about this dish's Eastern heritage. Perry, how are you doing, OK? Hi, Gino. Fantastic. Now, tell me everything I should know about the beautiful recipe. The recipe goes back to me, Grandma. My grandma then taught her daughter, which is my auntie, then she taught my dad, uh, and then he's then taught me. OK. My dad left Singapore when he was 17 to come over to Liverpool to see the Beatles. He loved the Beatles. Met my mother in Liverpool, and then I come along. I got taught this dish back in Singapore in my auntie's stall, um, and then I've been practising when I come home. My dad cooks it at home when we were kids. I've learned how to cook it, and that's where the dish come from. When I first ate the noodles, was back in Singapore in the hawker market. It's like a big food market uh, where I used to sit down there with all my family. My auntie would cook the noodles up and everyone would be there. And she's still running it to this day in Singapore. Is your grandmother still with us? Yeah, she's now 85. 85? 85. See, you're eating noodles with prawns and you live until 85 <laughs> at least. That's what we say. <laughs> Perry, what would it mean to you and to your family to have this dish on a restaurant menu. It makes me proud, it makes my family very proud in Singapore that the dish has come all the way from Singapore and it's ended up in the top restaurants in Liverpool. Now, you're using prawns. Yeah. And I guess you're going to have to cook this recipe as I'm ordering. Yeah, what I'm right? going to do, well, get all the stock ready and everything, and then as you order, I'll be cooking dish by dish. It's a bit concerning to me, because what about if I have four tables with I'll... six or seven noodles, how are you going to deal with that? I'll make two portions in each one. You know, I'll trust you. Service is fast approaching, and with limited preparation time left, the pressure is rising for our three home cooks. In just over an hour, their dishes will be eaten by paying customers for the first time. Edie's rabbit and bacon pie is well underway, but she's concerned that the main ingredient of her dish might put the diners off. I'm worried about people thinking of rabbit pie as, oh, poor little bunny rabbit. It's a wild rabbit and they're specially farmed for cooking. If people just give the dish a go and taste it, they'll be impressed how lean the meat is and how tasty it is. Meanwhile, David seems to be taking things in his stride. No worries, no fears. Everything is going... Ah, no, it's not. Yeah, everything going to plan. But thinks that he is entitled to a little more help. I'm a Jewish princess. I'm supposed to have someone to help me to do all this stuff. I'm not supposed to do it. I'm supposed to tell people how to do it. And Perry has almost finished his preparations. For him, though, the real challenge will come during service. Gina was saying that uh, he's panicking a little bit because I've only got three minutes to cook from fresh onto a plate, out for service. I've got two woks. And Gina was saying, you know, I'm going to be under a lot of pressure. Scouts love a challenge. Three wonderful recipes, and I'm sure their family, they will be so proud. But now we're going to have to find out what our paying customers got to say. So join me next, because service is about to start. Coming up, the cooks are keeping Gino on his toes. Gino is working very hard, I have to say. He shouts all the time. Very Italian thing. And it's chaos in the kitchen. Come on, Gino. Welcome back to There's No Taste Like Home, where today all you need is love. I'm in the home of the Beatles, Liverpool. The clock sticking on my three home cooks, and very soon this beautiful restaurant is going to be filled with paying customers. So I'll better go back in the kitchen and check on them. And while I do that, let's remind ourselves what's on the menu today. Edie Pope is baking Grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie, served with seasonal vegetables a recipe that fed a large farming family with all the ingredients available locally. 
Mum said, you'll never be good at baking, your hands are too big. But she did admit that she was wrong. David Hackack is making his grandmother Farcher's Sabich, a vegetarian meal of stuffed pitta, originally cooked by Iraqi Jews on the holiest day of the week. The roots of this intricate dish are shrouded in mystery. Well, Israelis will say this is their uh, dish, which is incorrect, because Egyptians will claim it's theirs, Iraqi will claim it's theirs. You know what? It's tasty. Who cares whose it is? And Perry NG, who is making his grandma Amma's hokey and me. Prawn and squid fried noodles served with a topping of crispy shallots and sliced limes. This dish travelled from Singapore to Liverpool when Perry's dad came in search of the Beatles. Goes back to the 1930s. My grandmother's dish, then my grandmother then taught me auntie, who then taught me father, who then taught me. It's almost lunchtime and the waiting staff are putting the final touches to the dining room for today's special service. In the kitchen, it's a hive of activity as our three home cooks make their final preparations. Just hoping that, you know, I can get everything done on time and it looks nice and it tastes nice. The food looks uh, nice, I and mean, the three, the all three dishes look really, really beautiful. Let's hope they taste as, as good as they, they look. I'm a bit worried about service, because every individual dish has got to be fried. So uh, once the preparation's done and the service starts coming in, that's when I'll start panicking. So, Edie, what's happening here? I've made a gravy out of the stock okay. of the rabbit. The mushrooms, bacon and shallot onions are all in there as well. Very nice. And it's now ready for its pie crust. Oh, look at that. This looks amazing. Try the gravy. Oh. Nice. Oh. And I thought all you need is love. No, mm. all you need is a good gravy. That's what we need. What do we need? Oh. It's fantastic. So, David, what's happening here? No, don't. don't. David, don't. What's happening here? What's I, saw, I saw you kissing her. What about me? Why are you getting uh, all jealous? Why are you getting all jealous in the kitchen? You need to get on with the cook. All right. Mwah. Now. Yes, excuse me. This that, one. Mwah. Now. Thank what's you, happening you can here? Go now. What's happening here? I want to know what you're doing. Uh, this is hummus. Okay, so you're preparing chickpeas. 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 Yeah. You've got the garlic here. Garlic right. goes in there. You've got uh, parsley, flatling parsley. Right? Yes, you flatling it man? because, of course. Beautiful. So, Perry, what's going on here? I'm just whisking the edge, do you know? Everything else is prepared, Everything ready is prepared. to go. No, I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm a little bit concerned the fact that you actually have to cook everything then and there. Yeah. We need to have a nice, clear plan, because I want your recipe to shine, okay. and I want all the customers there to think, you know what, this is the best yeah. noodles with prawns and squid I've ever had. I think right? it will. I'm sure it will. For the family. For the family. For the family. <laughs> with a morning full of busy preparation, the hours have flown by. Outside, a queue of hungry diners have gathered, all eager to try the three historical dishes. It's the moment of truth for our cooks. The doors are opened and this restaurant is now ready for business. The customers in Liverpool are a discerning crowd, so our three home cooks will have to pull out all the stops to impress them. Now, we're going to start service in about a half an hour time, OK? So it's very important that I need to see the final dish, the way you're going to present it to the customer, I have to see it. I have to taste it, I have to see the presentation, the way you're going to put it together. So I'm going to give you about 10 minutes. Fine. Can you please bring me your final dish on the pass so then I can taste it? OK, so everybody in the station, OK, and bring me the dish, Thank OK? You. Thank you. Whilst the cooks plate up their dishes, Gino heads front of house to meet a very special diner, Edie's extremely proud daughter. How are you? Are you OK? Yeah, you. Good, good, good. Good day so far? Yeah, of course. He's working very hard, your mum and dad. You know? Do you think she deserves to win? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Why? Because she is the most amazing person I've ever met. She's an amazing woman. I'll give you, you know, I'll give you that. She's, she's incredible. She's so hard for everything that she's got, and she's, she's fab. I'm going to start crying. Made it oh. Yeah. But it's true. What, it what would it mean to her to win today? It means everything. Oh. Everything. Yeah. I'm falling oh. off. That's OK, that's fine. 
it's, it's also the memory of your grandmother. Uh, I guess that's that's where it would have come, yeah, come through. Yeah, I yeah. Everybody absolutely adores her. She she communicates with people on every single level, from a child yeah. to yeah. to adults to old people. She works hard in the shop. She just loves everybody. She's Wonder Woman. Yeah. That's why I'm scared. She's gonna hit me in the kitchen. That's why I'm trying to find out if she's gonna hit me in the kitchen. That's what I'm trying to find out. But I tell you what, I uh, uh, I had a fantastic day with your mom today, and uh, uh, enjoy lunch. I didn't mean to make you cry. No, this, is this is only joy. This is only joy. Tears of joy, by the way. You know, tears of joy. And. Uh, uh, See you guys later. Thank okay. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. At the end of lunch service, Gino will award one dish the honor of being on this restaurant's menu for a month. His decision will look at three main criteria. Cost of ingredients, preparation time in the kitchen, and the reaction of the diners. It's Gino's job to ensure that every dish that leaves the kitchen tastes delicious and looks stunning. First to take the taste test is Edie with Grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie served with seasonal vegetables. Very beautiful seasoned pastry. And the rabbit. Oh, yeah. Tender, flakes away. You get the smokiness and the saltiness of the bacon coming through, which works absolutely beautiful. Now, this is one of the dishes that I can see why. He's been in this family for so long. Next, Gino will taste David's grandma Farcher's Iraqi Jewish sabich, stuffed pita bread, hummus, and salad. I think it's very pretty. Do I think that is an elegant way to eat this dish? I don't think so. Because if I come in a restaurant and I see this, there is only one thing that I want to do. Straight in. Oh. Oh. And I don't care if I'm messy. I don't care if I have egg on my nose or aubergine. This is lovely. And finally, it's Perry's Grandma Amma's prawn and squid fried noodles, served with a topping of crispy shallots and slices of lime. Now, the dish is absolutely tasty, beautiful, OK? Yeah. The only problem that I have here, for restaurant reason, is the presentation. Right. So what I want you to do is to put the stir fry together, and then the rings of the squids, just highlight them for me. OK. OK, so you can put all the beautiful prawns on top like that, like I'm doing it. Yeah. OK. So all of a sudden, we lift up the plate and we make sure people know exactly what they're going to get straight away. OK. A little bit of coriander on top. Yeah. Yeah, and then just go for it. OK. But the dish is absolutely beautiful. I'm going in for a second, my friend. Really good. Ladies and gentlemen, are we ready to order? Yeah. Now that Gino is happy with the taste and presentation of all three dishes, he allows service to begin. It's very important that whenever I shout the order, that you answer me back, OK? And you need to tell me the timing, how long it's taking you to, to do your dish. Because I have to coordinate all the table together with all the dishes nice and ready. Are we ready? Yes, yes Gino. Gino. OK, so everybody back to station. And we start in 30 seconds. Come on. Yeah, what might I get for you, ma'am? Could I have grandma's vegetarian pizza? And I'll have the prawn squid fried noodles. Thank you. Um, can I have the rabbit and bacon pie, please? The vegetarian pizza. Isn't this okay. OK, guys, first order is in. One aubergine, one noodle. Hello? Yes, Nino. OK. Edie, this is for you. Five pies. OK, Gino. OK. For how long? Five minutes. How long for the noodle? Five minutes, Gino. David, how long is it going to take to put this together? Two minutes. Come on, guys. I know it's, uh, you're out of your comfort zone, but please, let's push it. Let's do it for the families. OK, one more order. Two more noodles. So you got seven in total. OK, guys, two aubergine, one noodle, two more pies. OK, we are at the beginning of service. Um, everything is OK, really. I mean, David has got everything under control. Edie, the pie, is uh, very quick to put together. The only problem we're going to have is with the uh, Paris dish, because it takes five minutes. It's a concern that I had all day. And now, actually, is when it's 
it starts to panic in me because I uh, need to make sure all the dishes, they go out at the same time. So time is crucial. Hey, it's a little bit panicky now. I haven't got a clue what's going on. I just keep on air and zero going through me end. I need four noodles in total. Here he comes again. Four noodles, Gino? Yes, please. Come on. Let me see if you can walk this walk. David is using his knowledge of psychology to take a more laid-back attitude. It's all in here. You pretend you are in stress, but you shouldn't be in stress. What's the point of being stressed? People want to eat. Whatever you give them, they'll eat. Now, prepare yourself. I need three aubergine in total, yeah? OK. You know you got six aubergine to do, yeah? But will it work? Is it not for me? I'm going to start to cry very soon if this dish doesn't come out. Ready? Stop moaning. Try to start moving them now, young man. Make sure the plate is nice and I'm clean. Going to do that now. Remember, we are in a restaurant. Like that. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. That's a beautiful dish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful, absolutely beautiful, spot on with the prawns right, on top yeah. and the uh, squid, yeah? With all three dishes making the grade, Gino is happy for them to be served to the customers. Thank you. Thank you. Back in the kitchen, Perry is really struggling to cook to order. Come on, Gino. The kitchen's full. Come on, two more. Pressure now, pressure. Come on, on Gino. Lime, 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 lime. Come on, let's work together. OK, Gino. Perry's problems are seriously delaying service, so Gino asks David to help. How many do you need? Five. OK. Five pies. How long? One minute. Over in Edie's once calm and collected corner, she's now having her own kitchen drama with the rabbit pie. Uh, you must make sure that they look all exactly the same you gave it to me, yeah? Yeah. Here, look at look the problem here. You have the... That's look. not in the middle, is it? You need to make sure that the crust is on top of the pie, not the other way around. All right. This is not an upside-down rabbit pie. OK. Gino is working very hard, I have to say. He shouts all the time. Very Italian thing. You got four aubergine, David. You say it. Thank you. How long for this noodle? He's teasing me now. <laughs> Two pies. Make sure your plates are hot. They are hot, too. How long for the one noodle? Five minutes, Gino. What, for one? Yeah. This service is proving to be tough for our cooks, but are the diners enjoying their lunches? I ordered the rabbit pie. And um, it's beautiful. The pastry is just so succulent. Meat, very well cooked. I've got the vegetarian pita. It's lovely. It's really tasty. They've got the prawn and squid noodles, which looks fabulous and also tastes fabulous. It's got fried shallots on the top and the chilies, and it goes really well. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Guys, the dishes are looking absolutely beautiful, by the way. So you should have been... Edie? Edie? Yes. The dish looks beautiful. Thank you. So well done. Thank you. Just give one more push, guys. Perry, I know that you are under stress, but for me, please keep smiling. All right? And one more push, and then we're done. But join me after the break, because I'm going to have to make the decision which of these dishes they're going to be on this restaurant menu for one month. Don't go anywhere. Guys, one rabbit, one noodle. Yes, yes, Coming up. And the winner today of There Is No Taste Like Home is... <laughs> Chef Gino De Campo is on a mission to prove there's no taste like home. This is what good home food is all about. Simple as that. He's found three home cooks with three historic family recipes. Together, they've taken over a restaurant in Liverpool. It's a full house, and as a result, the orders are coming through thick and fast. Our three home cooks have found it to be a tough challenge. It's been a hard day's night, and I've been working like a dog. 
Service is nearly over and they are all hoping that Gino will pick their dish to feature on this restaurant's menu for a month. Come on, we are on the last table. Okay, Gino? I got the last table in my hand. One more push, three noodles, one aubergine. Okay, Gino? How many portions of rabbit have you got? Three. I'm good. Can I have two noodles? Yes, Gino. Come on. As soon as Perry wakes up with the other noodle, we are done. What do you want now, another three? Come on. This is the last rabbit pie. That's it. They were number 20, guys. This was the last table. Well done. This was the last table. OK? Well done. Well done. How do you feel? Tell me. I want an example. Fantastico. Fantastic. Fantastico. Fantastic. Fantastic. What about you, Edith? Did you, did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it, yes. yes. Is this something you would do it again? Yes. Now, to show you that I'm with you guys, yes. I'm going to go in a bar to have a drink. You're going to stay here and clean up this chichi. <laughs> Service is now over and our cooks have done all they can to secure their dish a place on the restaurant's menu for a month. It's now up to the diners and the restaurant's head chef and manager to help Gino make his difficult decision. I had the rabbit and um, bacon pie. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I've had rabbit pie before, but never with bacon in it. And I think the bacon, you know, we could just taste it. And it was fantastic, amazing. The vegetarian pita bread, and I found it to be really tasty. Everything that was on the plate was really fresh, really well put together. Um, everything worked together, there was nothing sort of jarring with each other, and it sort of complemented each other and all worked alongside each other, but also worked individually. I had the noodles, they were absolutely delicious. The chef's done a really, really good job. You can taste all the different spices running through the, the food, it was absolutely beautiful. And yeah, it does deserve a place on any good menu in any good restaurant, as far as I'm concerned. Well, the diners seem to have enjoyed them, but which dish will Gino pick? Will it be Edie Pope and her grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie? Served with seasonal vegetables, this recipe once fed a large farming family with all the ingredients available on the farm. What would it mean to you and to your family and to the dish to win today? Just to keep it going for generations to come, hopefully. As people are learning now to cook instead of all these uh, prepared meals, I think they will try things like So you're this. really doing it for your family, but yes. also for all the farmers oh, out there? Yes, yes. Or will it be David Hakak and his grandmother Farcher's Iraqi Jewish Sabich? For generations, his family have held this vegetarian stuffed pitta with hummus and salad dear to their hearts. No one in England ever heard of this dish before. And they're going to say, are there any more dishes, Iraqi Jewish uh, dishes? Uh, well, there are. Or will it be Perry NG who made Grandma Amma's hokey and me or prawn and squid fried noodles? This dish has travelled all the way from China to be enjoyed in Liverpool today. Perry, what would it mean to you and to your family to have this dish on a restaurant menu? It makes me proud, it makes my family very proud in Singapore that the dish has come all the way from Singapore and it's ended up on the top restaurants in Liverpool. So, guys, did you enjoy your lunch? Yeah. They were good, were they? Let me tell you something, the three cooks, they worked really, really hard. Since very early this morning, the preparation was very hot in the kitchen. They worked really hard. So I would like to introduce to you my three home cooks. Please, guys, come in. Are you tired? Very yeah. tired. Very tired. Well, let me tell you, I really enjoyed today. It's, uh, uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you. It's been a pleasure to work with your recipe. It was absolutely great. We cannot three winners as far as concerning me, and I think as far as concerning everybody that tried the dish, we have three winners here already. But only one dish can win the honor of being on this restaurant menu for one month. And the winner today of There's No Taste Like Home is... David with the vegetarian pizza. Well done. Well done.
kan vi! Your dish. This is, this is for you. A worthy winner. It, I really didn't mind who won. I was happy to be a part of it. My mum, my dad, my brother, my wife, all the family would be really proud that I've done it, that I've had the bottle to come on and do it. Grandma probably would have to say, one, she would be very, would be very, very proud. But uh, because she's coming from uh, from old school and a man is not supposed to be a cook, then for her that would be very weird that uh, a man can cook and actually win the competition. But it's fantastic. Thank you very much. Cheers. What an amazing day we had today. And of course, congratulations to David and his vegetarian Peter Bed. It was absolutely delicious. Now, guys, don't forget to join me next time as I continue my journey across the UK to find more home cooks. All eager to prove that that's not taste like home. Well, if you want to try the dish yourself or perhaps you want the details of the recipes featured on today's show, the only thing you've got to do is go to itv.com forward slash food.